Hi, my name is Frank and I'm a Orgo tutor here at Boston University's ERC. Hi, I'm Flo And this is video one of six for NMRs. You're probably thinking, geez, six videos? Well, NMRs is one of the hardest topics to learn in Orgo 1, so the easiest way to learn it is to break it down into six segments. So, uh, the first thing I want to talk about was uh, NMRs, like how it all works. So basically, uh, what happens is protons have a spin, and then when they are put in an electromagnetic field, their spin is going to change, and that change is called a shift. So uh, the electrons around them kind of forms sort of like a shield or like an orb around them, and it protects them from shifting. One of the factors that affects shielding is electronegativity. So different atoms like carbon, oxygen, fluorine, they have different electronegativities, and what electronegativity is, is basically the pull on electrons. So you usually see the, the hydrogen carbon bond like this, hydrogen oxygen bond like this, hydrogen fluorine bond like this, but what we don't know is that um, they have different poles, so the electrons are at different locations, sort of. The carbon is pretty generous, so he shares his electrons pretty evenly with hydrogen. And oxygen is more electronegative, so his electron, so the, the electrons in a bond will be slightly more over at oxygen side, so then this hydrogen, will, this hydrogen will have less electrons near him. And then fluorine is the most electronegative. So all the electrons in the bond is all the way here at fluorine, and hydrogen is kind of just like sitting here without anything. So the next concept I want to talk about is shielding. You guys probably heard the concept of shielding in class a lot. And some of you might not know what it is, but think of it as just the electrons. They kind of can form a orb or like a shield around the, the hydrogens, which are also protons. And then basically, uh, the hydrogen here will be more shielded, obviously, because the carbon, the not carbons, the electrons are closer to it. And then for the hydrogen oxygen bond, the electrons are farther away, so we call this hydrogen as deshielded because less electrons are forming that orb around it. And this example here with the hydrogen and fluorine, electrons are almost all the way up to fluorine, so this is the most deshielded hydrogen out of these three. Okay? So shielded basically just means there's more electrons forming that kind of protective shell around the hydrogen. And then deshielded just means that the electrons that usually form that shell is being pulled away. So now the hydrogen is kind of like sitting by himself, not shielded. Okay? Hi hydrogen. Hey carbon. Oh, electrons! Mine! Um, Mine! Okay, give it to me. It's fine. Hey, hydrogen! Hey, oxygen! Hey, electrons! Oh, electrons! I want! No! Mine. Mine! Give it to me! Hi, I'm Florian! Ooh, electrons! Hey, Florian. Oh, electrons! Okay, so next we're going to talk about resonance right here. So, uh, this structure right here, it's an aldehyde. Um, it actually has re a resonance structure, which makes this hydrogen here quite deshielded. And also, whenever you do NMRs, make sure you always draw all the hydrogens. The professors will kind of try to trick you by leaving the carbon here. You'll forget about these hydrogens. Okay? Alright. Uh, back to the resonance. Um, the double bonds, uh, electrons here, they can actually resonate up, causing you to have this resonance structure. The oxygen will now have six valence electrons, giving it a negative charge. And the electrons here left from the carbon and went up to the oxygen. So now the carbon is going to have a positive charge. So now um, you have a positive charge here next to your, your bond, which is electrons. And you know positive charges attract negative charges. So And also, you, want, you usually don't want your carbon to have a positive charge. So he's going to want to like satisfy it. But is he going to take it from the scary oxygen here and get beat up like me before? Oh, electrons! Oh! Or is he going to just go to the hydrogen here? who doesn't really have that strong of a pull on the electrons. And the answer is he's going to take it from these hydrogens. So that's why this hydrogen is deshielded. 
And because there's also a positive charge here, these hydrogens here also be shielded as a, as a result, because all the electrons are kind of more shifted up to the positive charge in this area. The next thing I want to go over is alkenes. So alkenes are actually a electron withdrawing, also known as like, when you hear electron withdrawing, just think of like a deshielding group, more or less. So alkenes are just basically a carbon carbon double bond, and they are, uh, because the electrons are so um, concentrated and centered right here, it kind of just pulls the electrons away from the hydrogens at the end. And that's why these hydrogens will also be deshielded by an alkene functional group. Okay, so, um, <laughs> DJ. so uh, yeah, special thanks to my uh, very, very strong assistant, Cheyenne. <laughs> She's the ERC tutor here for calculus. If you guys ever need punching. <laughs> or calculus help. <laughs>